Bootsy's puppies are five days old today and um, I thought I would take today to answer a question that someone asked uh, in the comments on a previous video and that would be to explain how the various colors of Cavaliers uh, are obtained. Now I know some of you only watch these videos because you like to see cute little puppies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start socializing these puppies, it's time, by giving them an experience with human contact and holding them in various positions and that's really the first stage of socialization. It's very important because Cavaliers are bred to be companion dogs and companion dogs have to be used to that human contact. So I'm going to hold the puppies one at a time and manipulate them a little bit so we're doing double duty here. We're going to be talking about colors and we're going to be socializing puppies. You're probably familiar with the fact that Cavaliers come in four different colors. This is a black and tan. There's black, there's tan markings, there's no white. We also have rubies, which are all tan, still no white. Tricolors, which are black and white with tan markings, and blenheims, which are tan and white with no black. Those are the four recognized colors for Cavaliers. In order to understand how each color is derived, you have to know just a little tiny bit about the genetics and remember your high school biology. Blenheims are the easiest to deal with because they carry nothing but recessive genes. Now remember what dominant and recessive means. If you, um, for every characteristic that's determined by a gene, there are two versions. One is called dominant and the other one recessive. And those words mean exactly what you would think um, if you have one dominant and one recessive version of the gene then the dominant will take over and the recessive characteristic uh, doesn't show up, just the gene is there. Uh, if you have two dominant, you're also going to have the dominant trait showing up, not the recessive. And if you had two recessive, that's when the recessive trait shows up. Just to simplify matters, there are basically two genes that control the colors. There's one for whether or not there's black and another for whether or not there's any white in the animal. What you basically have to know is that the gene for black is dominant over no black, but the gene for white is recessive, so no white is dominant over white. That's why Blenheims are the easiest to deal with, because they have white, which is recessive, and they have no black, which is also recessive. So the only way that those characteristics can show up in a dog is if they have both recessive versions of the genes. So if you breed a Blenheim to a Blenheim, nothing but recessive genes, that means nothing could possibly show up but the recessive characteristic. It's a little more complicated when you're dealing with um, a litter like this one, like Bootsy's, because Bootsy is a black and tan. And because she's a black and tan, that means she has definitely at least one gene for black, which is dominant. So she could have the recessive no black. And she also definitely has the dominant gene for no white, which is dominant over the gene for white. I know that there's the possibility that she carries the recessive genes because she is fifth generation in our family. And I know that there are um, 
Blenheims and tricolors in her background so that she does carry some of those recessive genes as well. When I look at this litter, I know the sire is a Blenheim, so he carried all recessive genes. I see two black and tans and three tricolors. They all have black, and some of them have white and some of them have no white. Now that leads me to suspect that she probably does, well, yeah, she definitely, sorry, carries the recessive gene for white. And it's very likely, not absolutely certain, but very likely that she carries no recessive gene for um, a lack of black. She's, in other words, she's doubled up on the dominant black gene. And um, if, with her first litter, her first litter had a tricolor and two black and tans, so we started to suspect that maybe she didn't carry that recessive gene. Um, now that we have five more puppies from her that all have black, it would seem that it's very likely that, uh, that she does not carry that recessive gene, but she obviously does carry the recessive gene for white. And in her case, you know, you can compare it to flipping a coin. If I flip a coin three times and it comes up heads all three times in a row, I start to suspect there might be something wrong with the coin, but I'm not absolutely positive. If I flip it five more times, and it comes up five more heads, I'm really getting very suspicious about that coin. And so that's why this litter points me in the direction of knowing what her background is. Now, I hope that wasn't too complicated. Um, I was a math teacher, not a biology teacher, so I'm really not equipped to deal with that. If you really are interested and you have some questions, then please uh, just message me on, the, um, on YouTube, and I, I always check the comments section, so I will be able to answer you right away. Now that yipping in the background is Bootsy. I kept her away so that I could do this video um, undisturbed. So I'm going to let her out and I'm going to end this now. The next video, we're going to introduce names for the litter because we have decided on names for them. So stay tuned for that.